time and praise tonight. So we just thank you, Lord, for what's going to happen tonight. Thank you for the choices that these people have made to be baptized into you, just taking a new step forward, Lord. So we just rejoice in your goodness. We rejoice and give you every praise tonight because you are just so worthy, Lord.
your God. Amen. Well, go ahead and shout to the Lord. Amen. I tell you what, that's something to get excited about. Amen. Every praise is to my God. Why is every praise to our God? Because he is truly worthy. Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be praised, magnified, glorified, irregardless of circumstances. God is always still going to be God. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, welcome this evening. We're excited to have you here. Go ahead and shake each other's hand and welcome each other into the house of God tonight. What a great night it is to be in the presence of our Savior. God again welcome tonight we're so excited to have you here I hope you came expecting tonight amen I hope you came expecting I hope you came excited because we serve an exciting God and so welcome tonight and we want to welcome you that are watching us via live stream as well we're excited to have you as well we're just excited to that you chose to come here tonight and be part of this service and we believe that tonight God is going to do something great in our midst amen and that's why we believe every time we come together that God is going to do something great. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. And also, uh, uh, we have people who are monitoring our live stream. So if you would just type in there where you're watching this from. And if you have a, a praise report or prayer request, maybe you give your life to the Lord tonight. We would love to celebrate with you. So welcome this evening. And again, thank you so much for coming on out. And if you're in the sanctuary and you happen to be a first-time guest, we want to say welcome as well. Uh, we got a guest welcome center back at the back of the sanctuary. Just come on back there. we got a free gift we'd like to give you and talk to you for a little bit. Make you feel right at home, amen? amen? Because that's where you're at. You're amongst family. So welcome this evening. So got some exciting things happening tonight. We have water baptism tonight, amen? amen. Uh, I think we have, uh, I, I think my wife said we have 55 people yeah. or something like that anyway. I don't know. I can't remember how many people it was, but it was somewhere between 1 and 55. No, we have some people that are getting water baptized tonight, and Pastor will be sharing a little bit, of course, of the significance of water baptism. But we invite every single one of you to join us downstairs in the foyer and help us to celebrate with those that are getting water baptized. Amen. It is a big step. And again, Pastor will share a little bit about that again uh, here in just a little bit. But we invite every single one of you uh, to come downstairs with us and we'll do some praise and worship. Pastor will share just a bit and then we'll go downstairs. But we're excited tonight for those who are going to be being water baptized. Also on Saturday, the Women of Light are playing bunko. Amen. Uh, they're going to be having a bunko and brunch uh, morning, uh, starting at 11 and ending about 1 or so, but it's going to be a great time. You can still sign up out in the foyer. Uh, Kelly Cruz is right here. Miss Linda is right here as well. If you have any questions, you can just see them uh, after the service, and they'll be able to let you know. But again, sign up so they know how many people are coming. It's going to be a great event, and they're going to have a lot of fun, so sign up for that out in the foyer. On April 21st, we have our Easter service, Amen that's coming up. Well, I tell you what, today really felt like spring. Amen. After last week, today felt really good. Today actually was the first day of spring. And so we're excited about that. I know Amy's got her, uh, her team all getting ready to present the gospel. And we're just excited about that. So invite your friends, invite your families. Amen. Invite your neighbors. Tell them to come on out and to hear the good news that Jesus is alive. Amen. He is alive. So that's going to happen, of course, Sunday morning service on, on April 21st. We have membership coming up in April as well, and uh, we're excited about that as well. We believe that this is a great church to be a member of. Amen? We believe that everybody should be a member of a local church, a local church where you can come, you can get fed, uh, we can pray, and, and we can all be part, and we can fellowship together, minister together. It's important to be part of a local church, and Family Harvest Church is the best church to be involved with. Amen? I am pretty biased, but I do believe it's great. Amen? But uh, anyway, so uh, come out and join us. We'll have more information as it comes up uh, a little bit closer, but that's going to be membership. But sign up out in the foyer so we know who's coming. Amen? You ready to sow into the kingdom of God? Yeah. So somebody shout, let us give. Let us give. Who am I to keep you from giving? Amen? The ushers in the aisle with envelopes. Just raise up your hand. They'll minister an envelope to you. And we're going to be reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. And I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation. And the Bible says this. Remember this. Now, how many of you know that if the Bible says remember this, we probably ought to pay attention. Amen? 
Not only had to pay attention, but we also had to do what the Bible says is to remember. So the Bible says, remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. And, you know, it's interesting to me that, you know, as the Apostle Paul is writing this and he's putting it in there, he's making it very practical and he's, he's showing people what they would understand. You know, I'm sure that there was a lot of people, it was a farming community, and they understood this, that the more seed you get in the ground, the bigger the harvest will come. Amen? Uh, you know, I, we have some, uh, a couple of folks in our church that are farmers, and, and they farm, and, and I know that if you ask them, they would probably say they don't till the ground, get it ready, run out right in the middle of the, of the field, drop one seed, and then go home. No, they recognize that the more seed you put in the ground, the greater the harvest. Amen? So he goes on to say, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and do not give reluctantly or in response to pressure. And when we read that, one of the things that we have to understand is when we come into the house of God, when we come ready to give and to sow our tithes and offerings, we should do it ahead of time. We should have purpose in our heart already. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, like especially sometimes we have special speakers and stuff like that. People say, well, let me see how that person does and then I'll decide how much I'm going to give. No, we should always purpose in our heart or prepare ahead of time to come and sow into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? We should always purpose in our heart ahead of time. For God loves the person who gives cheerfully, and God will generously provide all you need. I love that right there. You know, that little word right there, generously, makes a big difference. If it says, and God will provide, you say, yes, God will provide. But when you say God will provide generously, that means that God is going to go above and beyond. Amen? God is going to go above and beyond, and he's going to provide generously all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. And what you see right there is you see the commandment when Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, what is the greatest commandment? He said, what, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, he said, if you understand those two right there, you understand the kingdom. So what we see right here, we see real plainly, okay, that God will give, or we come and we give to God, we're loving him, and then he will provide us enough, not only for ourselves, but to share with others, amen? Because how many of you know it takes money to get the gospel around the world? It does, it takes money, right? It takes money to send evangelists, it takes money to, to all the different people that we share with over there on that wall of missions, and we send money out to them, and they're spreading the gospel. It takes money, but thank God that God is a God of more than enough, Amen? So if you're here tonight for the first time, maybe you're watching us for the first time, you can get involved with us as well. You can text FHC Cheyenne to 77977, or you can download our app as well. There's a push play right there, push pay, where you can go ahead and you can uh, give there as well. But also you can also watch our archives there. All the different messages are on there as well. But also if you're joining us for the first time, we believe in speaking over our seed. Amen? We believe that we can speak out of our mouth, and the Bible says we can have what we say. Amen? So grab a hold of your seed tonight. Let's all say this together. This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow it because I love God and want to see Family Harvest Church continue to fulfill what God has called us to do, building families that are happy, stable, fruitful, and blessed. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given to me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, it shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for many opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are opening because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. So, Father, as we come together this evening, Lord, and Lord, as we celebrate, Lord, by singing, Lord, and we worship and we praise, Lord, and also as we celebrate with those that are going to be making a public declaration of their life with you, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we have to sow faithfully and finances into the kingdom of God. Father, because we recognize, Lord God, that you've given us the mandate to take the gospel throughout the world, Father. And though we may never go to a foreign country as a missionary, we may never even go maybe even outside of the city, but also, Lord, you've called us to give so we can send people to go, Father. So we thank you, Lord God, that you give, Lord, as you say in your word, not only enough just for us, but you generously give so we can also be a blessing to others. So we ask you that you receive these tithes and offerings tonight, multiplying for your kingdom as we declare that lives are changed, delivered, and set free by our giving. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as the buckets go by, you can deposit your seed. Just stand up and get ready to worship.
Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you and we magnify you in this place tonight. And we thank you, Lord, that you have raised us up in new life in Christ Jesus. And thank you for that, Lord God. We're so grateful. Lord God, as the Bible says, we were dead in our sins. We were dead in our trespasses. But, Lord, you raised us up. And so tonight, Lord God, we thank you as we come and celebrate with these, Lord God, that are uh, signifying their trust and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and all that he's done for them through water baptism. We thank you tonight, Lord God, that it'll be a, uh, a night for them to remember, Lord God, and a night for them to, uh, to they can look back on as, as a mark in their life, Lord God, as a, a place in their life where they made this choice, Lord. And we, we just give you glory and we give you honor and praise. And thank you for every person here. Thank you for all those that are watching by live stream tonight, Lord. And, and we just give you glory and honor and praise. And we thank you for your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you may be seated. Ellen, if you could just turn me up just a little bit. Um, uh, thank you for coming out tonight and joining with us here in a, a little while. I'm going to share uh, the importance of water baptism, but and then we'll all go downstairs. We've locked the doors so no one can leave. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just kidding, joking. Okay, but we would like you to join us after, and I'll have everybody uh, dismiss. And we'll go downstairs. Miss Amy Ashley is going to make an announcement to the live stream audience, but you can just go on downstairs and uh, don't visit. Wait till afterwards to visit if you would, and uh, so that we can continue on with our um, service. Just also want to remind everybody we're still doing uh, Wednesday prayer. I know last week because of the storm, uh, we didn't have it. But we still are doing the uh, prayer from 11.45 to 1.45. So I encourage you to come on out and to um, join us. I was just realizing this is, I was saying, this is only 6.30, but it's 7.30. So um, anyways, uh, I was looking at that. I was like, wow, we're really early tonight. But uh, go in your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 6. And uh, we're going to talk about the importance of, of water baptism and, and the significance of it because it is a very significant. You know, I was raised in a church that we were baptized as infants, and I do not remember that. And, and I was a baby. I don't know how old I was. And uh, I got born again. Uh, when I was in college, my freshman year in college, I got born again in uh, Baptist church. You've heard the story, the two Baptist deacons. Well, then, uh, not too long after that, they had a baptismal service, and, and I just felt impressed. I remember talking to my mom and dad, and I said, I just feel like I need to be baptized as an adult. And I can remember some of my family members uh, that were still in that, nothing wrong with that church and, and, and such, they were still in that church, and why is Dave getting baptized again? And and my mom just said, well, because there's a significance in getting baptized as an adult. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. And, and as one uh, a gentleman that I know, uh, Brother Jim Caseman, you know, he was raised in a certain denomination. And they were baptized as infants. And he said uh, he, he didn't come out of his life till he was 28 years of age, didn't get born again. He said, if I died before then, he said, that little bit of water just would have evaporated right, a, right away and, and such. Now, we know baptism doesn't save us. Um, but we do know that baptism is a sign uh, of those that have committed their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And here in Hebrews chapter 6, the writer writing says, therefore leaving the discussion, verse 1, sorry, therefore leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us then go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine, you notice know, says of the doctrine of baptisms, you notice know, it's plural, of laying out of hands, of, the, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. So, so no, sir, there, it's a doctrine of the church. Baptism, or the doctrine of baptism. So there's three baptism that, baptisms that we see in the, in the Word of God. The first is when we are baptized into the body of Christ. And you're, uh, I don't know how many years ago, about five, four or five years ago, I like listened to Pastor Robert Morris out of Dallas, Texas. And he was down at my brother's church, and, and, and he's one of the teaching pastors that comes through there. And, and he was teaching on baptism, and I never looked at it in the way he explained it to, to help you distinguish the different kind of baptisms that are in the Bible. And what we talk about is who is doing the baptizing, okay? Who is doing the baptizing? Well, the first baptism is the baptism into the body of Christ. When does that happen? That happens when you're born again. 
That's what happens when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit places you or baptizes you into the body of Christ. And this is where sometimes people get confused. They, they think that that saves you. No, baptism, that baptism in, in different places in the Word of God, when it talks about that, baptizing them in the name of the Father, that means that they are, we're not doing it, but the Holy Spirit is doing it. The second type of baptism is what we're going to do tonight, and it's water baptism. And water baptism is done by man, okay? And so tonight, I'm going to be dunking some people. So, and depending on how bad their life was, how long I hold them under, okay? No, just, just kidding, just kidding, okay? Uh, but um, uh, we will be, so, so man does the water baptism, man does the baptizing. Then we have the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and, and that is when we are filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a second experience that we, that we um, experience after be born again, and it's Jesus baptizing us into the Holy Spirit. So does that, does that help you? Does that make sense? When we understand who's doing the baptism, then it, it gets rid of all the confusion right? And to understand these. So, so in, in talking about that, and let's look, uh, let's look about uh, why then, why should we be, be baptized? That was why my, you know, my, some of my family members, why is David being baptized? <coughs> and to be honest with you, at that time, I didn't know what I know today, but I knew I needed to do it. And in fact, we'll talk about this in a little bit. It was very interesting. I got born again, and it was probably about a month later that I got baptized and you know, my friends, that spoke more to them that I got baptized than when I said that I'd got given my life to the Lord. They're like, oh yeah, Kevin's got religion. But when I went and got baptized, they were like, wow, Kevin's getting baptized. That spoke more to them. We'll talk more about that, why that does, what it, what it even signifies to the world and to unbelievers. So, so first of all, why should we be water baptized? Obedience to Christ's command. Okay, obedience. Everybody say obedience. Uh, it, you know, seems like sometimes obedience is a four-letter word in some Christian circles, and it, I don't know how many letters it is here, but, but we need to obey, right? We need to follow after what, what God has told us, and in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I'm giving you. And one of those commands or one of those things that we are to be is be uh, water baptized. I can remember one person telling me, now I got baptized, baptized by a, a Baptist pastor. And, and after I got spirit filled, I had somebody tell me, and at first I thought they were joking. And they said, you need to get rebaptized. I said, why? Because, because you're, you're spirit filled now. Now you need to get baptized. I said, no, I don't. You know, I don't need to get baptized every time something new happens in my life. Now, some people do as a recommitment to their life. They, they, they've chosen to do that, and that is fine. And so we hear Jesus telling, telling his disciples. Well, if he's telling his disciples, he said, teach them everything that I've taught you, and to obey the commands that I've given you, then we are to obey. In fact, Jesus says in John 16, or John 13, verse uh, 17, because see, this obedience it shows our sincerity, right? Yeah. It shows our sincerity to, to God and following Him. But guess what? It's also when we obey, it's a way for joy to come, and it's a continual joy. Jesus said in John 13, verse 17, He said, If you know these things, happy. Everybody say happy. happy. Not one of the seven dwarves either, okay? Happy are you if you do them. If you know these things, happy, there's joy. You know, I've seen, I, you know, raising three daughters and, 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 you know, and seeing that. And sometimes when you had to discipline them and, and then, you know, when they would follow. It was very interesting when they'd obey. There, there was a happiness that was there. I don't know if they noticed it. But as a parent, I noticed it. I've seen it when I've had to bring correction uh, to staff or in, in different situations. And I've seen, <laughs> I've seen, it's, there's a lightness that comes when they recognize. Or uh, I know there's been times um, 
over the years and and uh you know worship people you know people that that are creative they they're they can be a tough bunch sometimes i'll just be they're creative and they just got a good and 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 so you know and i there's been times that uh not so much here but i can remember in the church in nebraska there'd be strife and i was like okay i gotta deal with this i mean you could sense it you could, you could just, and, and so I'd deal with it, and, you know, we'd pray as a group, and, you know, and, 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 you know, repent, and get under the blood of Jesus, and it was just like, they were just like lambs, and, you know, just, you know, they, they, there was a freedom that came. There was a freedom that came into their life, because they realized, you know, there were some things that needed to be dealt with in their life, and so when we obey God's commands, joy comes. Everybody say, joy comes. Joy comes. Right? Then water baptism is an ordinance of the church. Okay? It's an ordinance. And that just means it's ordained by Jesus. Okay? Uh, the Lord's Supper, communion, is an ordinance of the church. It was ordained by the Lord Jesus himself. Marriage is an ordinance of the church. It's ordained by God. And so that's all that means. Just a, you know, big theological word or whatever. Ordinance of the church. And so, so the, the good news then... Or when we, I'm sorry. So when, when, when uh, we are baptized in that, that's just a normal thing to do. If you say the book of Acts and you see that a lot of times immediately they got water baptized. They didn't wait. Right? In Acts 10, uh, 48, and this is after Peter went to Cornelius' house. And, and, and they got born again. I, I find this really interesting. You know, they didn't do any. Peter didn't do an altar call. You know, he didn't say, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> The Bible says the Holy Spirit fell on them, and they begin to speak in other tongues. Well, you can't speak in other tongues unless you've been born again. Yeah. And, and they, they recognized that the Holy Spirit had come upon them just like it had at the beginning, the beginning of what? The day of Pentecost, yeah. when the Holy Spirit was poured out. So notice what Peter says in Acts 10, 48. He says this. It says, so he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, one place it says, we've got water. What's preventing them from being baptized? I remember one time in the church, uh, my pastor, Pastor Barry Taylor, back in Cleveland, Tennessee, and there was a gentleman that came. I can't remember where. He had gotten born again, and he had to leave. I don't know. if I can't remember if he was military. I think he might have been military or something. He was getting deployed. He wanted to get baptized, and we didn't have anything. We, it was a Methodist church. I don't know. I, I think they water or sprinkle or whatever. And so we didn't have anything, so we had a pitcher of water. And, and so he just had the guy kneel, and, and he just took that pitcher of water and just poured it on him and said, I baptize you in the name, right? So, well, that doesn't take. Well, how, what do you mean it doesn't take? Did it by faith, right? You know, we didn't have a place. We couldn't, you know, we didn't run out. We, no, we used to go. A place down there called Harrison Bay Park, we used to go down there, and we would baptize people. We used to baptize people in the pool. I baptized people in the pool before. I baptized people in an ocean. I baptized people in the lake. We had years ago when I was in North Dakota, we had a youth. We had a, uh, we were doing a youth camp and went down. We were actually in Manitoba, Canada. Went down to a place in in uh, uh, North Dakota, and I don't know. I just felt impressed to to ask not only the the young people, but I had them announce it to the adults. Anybody want to be water baptized? Just and and we had about twenty people, and I, we had people come up. What are they doing? What are they doing out there? And we got one, one person got saved because somebody was a, they talked to him. Well, they, they accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and such. And so, you know, I've done it in different places, baptized people, Amen. right? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The important point is that we do it. And so he gave orders. And then Jesus himself was baptized by John. So we're following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're following after him. And that example, Matthew 3 uh, verse 13 through, and then also 16 says in verse 13, then Jesus came from Galilee to John to be baptized by him. And John was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You need to be baptized in me. And then Jesus says, no, we need to do everything for righteousness sake. And then it goes on in verse 16. It says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. So we see, see John the Baptist baptizing so we follow we are following in our savior's uh, uh footsteps we are following his example when we when we are water baptized so so there's why we should but so what does it mean then right how many like to know meaning right yeah. you know uh, uh you know why do we raise our hands 
Right? Things like that. Why do we do certain things? Sometimes we think we need to revisit some of those. We forget those of us that have been in this for a while. We forget people don't understand why are they raising their hands. Yeah. I remember years ago, uh, my brother, whom we're going to go visit this coming week in Tennessee, and uh, years ago when him and his, when him and Barb got married, and and we are at a church, Mount Parent Church of God in Atlanta, North Atlanta, Georgia. And, and, you know, Pentecostal, charismatic church. And, and you know, the church, the church I was raised in, we didn't raise our hands. In fact, you know, if the preacher wasn't done in an hour, they had, there was guys that had alarms on their phone, you know, beep, 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 you know, time to quit, pastor. I, I figured it out years later why. You all want to know why? Because they all had nicotine fits, and they had to go out and smoke. And so an hour is about all they could go before they could smoke. I'm serious. It was like, you know, it, after church was over, everybody go out, and there was just this big cloud of smoke that would come up outside, you know. Anyways, and, and, and so why do, we, why, are we, why do we need to be water baptized? Number one, because it, 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 it signifies you've been crucified with Christ. We just sang that song, yeah. right? Signifies that you've been crucified with Christ. See, the good news is this, Christ Jesus died for our sins. That's what Paul, you know, that's what we said at the beginning of this year. That's what we set forth. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. I delivered unto you, right, what was given unto me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he was raised again on the third day according to the scriptures. That's what we're declaring, declaring Jesus. So it signifies that we have been crucified with Christ. See, just like we identified, and sometimes people say, well, this is unfair. And, you know, we identify in the sense when Adam sinned, the Bible says all have sinned. So we I have identified all mankind, identifies with man's sin. Well, Jesus is the second Adam. He was crucified on that cross. So when he was crucified, just like you and I were crucified on that cross. In fact, Paul says in Galatians 2.20, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The old King James says, my old man. Right. My old man was crucified. That old man was crucified. It signifies that dying. We died to our old way of life, right? Yeah. Every once in a while tries to creep up, but we died to that. We can remember. And tonight, those of you that are being baptized, when, when you go under those waters, that's what it signifies, dying to the old self. Dying, you're being buried. That's the, the next thing. But you're dying to your old way. You're dying. Yes, you got born again, but I, I believe when we get water baptized, it helps us to, it's like a picture. It helps us to see this is what is happening. I'm being buried. I'm being, I, my old man has died. Go over to Ephesians chapter 2 if you have your Bibles. Ephesians 2 verse 1. And it says, in you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Not, not talking about physical death, talking about spiritual death. We were separated from God. Our, our, our spirit man was dead to God. There was no life there. And he says, you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you used or once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the, our flesh, fulfilling, excuse me, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath, just as others. But God, everybody say, but God. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. Talk, we talk, you know, we call it being our, our identification with Christ Jesus. We were crucified with him. We were buried with him. And, and so tonight, when you come back out of that water, it signifies being raised up with Christ. Right. When you go down under, it signifies dying. It, it's a, a symbolization of you dying to the old way of life. You come back up out of that water, and that's what, that's what gives you reason to shout. Amen. Right? Hallelujah, you come back out. It, I'm being raised up. Hallelujah. He goes on. He says, but God who is rich in mercy. I'm sorry, verse 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So the waters of baptism signify 
the crucifixion, the, the burial, and being raised back up in Christ Jesus. And, and then the next part of you've been buried with Christ. Romans 6, 4 says, for we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And so it's the burial grounds. You know, tonight, those of you who are being baptized, leave, leave the old man there. When you go down under that water, you know, if you, if you just say it in your mind, I'm leaving the old man dead. I'm leaving him buried tonight. Right. This signifies. And, you know, my older brother, we, we were raised in a church, and I, you know, we were all baptized as infants. And, and <coughs> excuse me, when Pastor Robert Morris was there and he was teaching, he was talking about water baptism, he took a little bit longer that particular day. And afterwards, my brother says, You know what? Because he heard some things that he never heard. And he understood some things that he never understood before. And he says, I think I need to go get water baptized. Because it spoke to him that, that dying, that old man being put to death, it spoke to him. And so, you know, it's very striking again in the New Testament. After a person voluntarily put their faith in Christ, they were almost immediately. Remember the, the eunuch that was, you know, from Ethiopia and, and, and Philip? The Spirit caught Philip and, and brought him upside the chariot, and he heard the man reading from the book of Isaiah. And so Philip got up there, and the guy asked him, who's he talking about, himself or someone else? And then, G, and then Philip began to explain to him the way of salvation. And then they, they passed by a place where there was water, and he says, what's preventing me from getting baptized? What's preventing me from getting baptized? And so water baptism is a very significant statement of your faith. You are stating, number one, you are stating your faith that you have died to the old way of life in our brand new creation. You are stating by faith, I'm, I'm, I'm dead to the old way. I, you know, I wish I'd known all this when I got baptized back in 1977 at the Baptist church. But I knew something had happened. I knew it was important, as I said, but I wish I'd known because I believe it would have saved me a few years of, you know, living that carnal life and living, you know, according to my flesh. I understood I didn't need to live that way anymore. I was born again, I, you know, and I didn't, need, I didn't have to live that way anymore. And, and so it, it signifies. And see, it's a visual aid to those that are watching. It's a visual aid that you've committed your life. It doesn't save you, but it's a visual aid. Not only to yourself, but to those that are watching and to anyone else, it's a visual aid to them. And they're, you're saying, I've died to my old self. I'm being raised up in newness of life to serve Christ Jesus. In fact, in certain parts of the world, that, you know, like you know, when I said, my friends, oh yeah, Kevin's got religion. But man, when I got water baptized, that spoke to them. They're like, wow, you know, I guess this took, <laughs> you know. But, but it, it was interesting because it commented about it. Why are you getting water baptized? Well, I didn't totally know. I knew that it was important that I do it. I didn't totally understand all that I'm giving you tonight, but, it, but I realized it was important to do that. And they, it, it spoke to them. It spoke to them. Something has happened in his life, he, you know, for him to go and get water baptized. And so it's a visual aid. And in many parts of the world, they, they you know, someone gives their life to Christ, you know, they, they don't like it. But man, when they get water baptized, they will say, you are dead to me. When that person commits their life to Christ and they go and they get water baptized, a dad or a mom, they will say to a child, you are dead to me. Because they understand. I don't know how they understand, but they have an understanding. You know, it's one thing to commit your life, and now you've got water baptized, and it speaks to them. And they will literally tell them, you are dead to me. You are no longer a part of this family. You know, in America, we go, wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty radical. Well, it is radical because we've given our life to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? And we are signifying to ourselves. And then you are stating your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a picture to help us understand that. And of course, uh, it's a sign. It kind of jumped ahead, but it's a sign to the world that you've given your heart to Jesus. It's a sign to the world that you made that uh, commitment. You know, 1 John 5, 8 says there's three that bear witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our heart. How many can bear witness that Jesus is your Savior Amen. and he's Lord of your life? The Bible says we know, right? The Holy Spirit bears witness with us that we are children of God. Secondly, the blood of Jesus, when we apply it by faith, 
it, when you came to Christ, bears witness that you are God's child. Uh, teaching a class in, in uh, CBTC on false religions and cults, and, and, and one of the most, just about every false religion, well, not just about all false religions, they deny the divinity of Christ. They deny that the blood of Jesus can cleanse from all sins. They deny that. We don't. It's the blood of Jesus. Right? Everybody say the blood. Right? It's the blood of Jesus. It cleanses us. Aren't you glad? Yes. That it cleanses us from our sins and it bears witness to us. And then the waters of baptis, baptism bear witness to the world that we are children of God. And so we've made a break. Everybody say, I've made a break. Made a break. Right? From that old way of life. So in recap, real quick here, before we go back downstairs, water baptism is an act of obedience. It's an act of obedience. I'm obeying what God has told me in His Word. Number two, it's been ordained by Christ. It's an ordinance of the church. Christ Jesus ordained it. Number three, we are following Jesus' example. Amen. Right? He got baptized. Boy, what, what better example to follow? He didn't need to, right? Amen. In fact, John the Baptist said, you need to be baptized in me. And Jesus said, no, we're doing it for righteousness sake, yeah. to fulfill all righteousness. Number four, it signifies that we've been crucified with Christ. Number five, it signifies that we've been buried with Christ and then raised up to new life. And then finally, it's, it, it's a sign to the world and it's a sign to other people that we've committed our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So I hope for those that are being baptized and those that have been baptized, and I know you've heard this before, but some of those I know, they haven't. So praise God. So as we go downstairs tonight, and join us, and we're going to rejoice with them, aren't we? Yes. And we're going to we're going to celebrate with them as they as they uh, commit, you know, take that next step in their walk with God and and such. So why don't you stand to your feet, if you would, with me? And Hallelujah, God's such a good God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and let let's just do this. Let's those that that are being baptized. Uh, uh, we're going to dismiss here in a minute. So those of you that are being baptized, if you'd go ahead and, and, and go down first so you can get ready and lined up and, and, and such, and then the rest of us will follow on down. So Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for these truths of the word. Thank you, Father God, that, that as we tonight baptize these people, Father, I thank you, Lord, they're, they, they've made that commitment to you. And Lord God, they are signifying to themselves, they've died to the old way, they, they've died to sin, and now they're being raised up in newness of life. Now, all that symbolism of being water baptized, and I thank you, Father God, that it'll just, it'll solidify in them that they are children of God. Yes. And I thank you tonight, Lord, we rejoice with them, Lord, in the step of faith that they're taking. Lord, we rejoice with them, Father God, as it, it, in their obedience to your word and, and in following the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' wonderful and mighty name we pray. Amen. Now we will, um, uh, Miss Amy's going to come here and just make an announcement to the live stream people. We will be taking uh, pictures down there as well. And uh, so uh, those that are being baptized, if you guys would go ahead and head on down. And, uh, and then uh, let Miss Linda and I head on down, and you all can follow us down downstairs. Go ahead, Sandra. Yes, and if you are watching on our live stream audience, um, I just want to tell you we are going to continue the baptism, but since we have our cameras and our setup upstairs, we're going to do it just on our Facebook page downstairs. So if you're watching us live stream on any other platform, you've got to join us on our Facebook page on church, um, on the church page. And so if you don't have that, and don't have that link, just watch later, and we will post a video of everything all together for you. But if you can, join us live on our Facebook church page, Family Harvest Church Cheyenne, and we will see you there. We are going to try to get the best of you for you that we possibly can. <laughs> so thank you for joining, and everyone else, we're going to quickly go downstairs, try not to fellowship or talk too much now. We're going to fellowship and talk afterwards, after we rejoice with the baptism, so Follow that wonderful man that is pointing down the stairs back there. Hey, this is a family show. Go, Caleb! Yeah! Brett, have you accepted Jesus as your personal?
personal Lord and Savior. I have. I have wrapped me behind this. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah! 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, Mike, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. Mike, Micah Jackson, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes! Yeah! Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. I know family, 
uh, there was family members that are here, and, and of course friends, and the church family, and what an exciting night uh, to be able to baptize all these people in, in the name of um, Jesus Christ. And so uh, we thank you very much, and those that are watching by live stream, and uh, just real quick, anybody, is there somebody that was wanting to, just want to make sure, okay. Hallelujah. Anything else that we have? Just help with the chair. Okay, we can have some. Yes. If anyone wants pictures, I can send them to their phone. Okay, they... all right. Anybody that wants pictures, those that were baptized or family members, if you have just seen Sandy, uh, she can get your uh, phone number and she can text uh, the pictures to you. Okay? So, Father, I speak a blessing over each and every person here tonight. Thank you, Father God, for as we have celebrated with these, Lord God, that, uh, their, that new life that they've already committed to Christ Jesus, Lord. And it'll just, it, it'll be something that'll it'll just grab a hold of their lives, Lord God, to realize they, their old man has died. And they've been risen uh, in new life with Christ Jesus. So we give you the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.